My name is Sinki. I'm originally from Hong Kong. I've been in, in Australia about 10 years and I had my jewelry business in Newtown for around three years. Did you encounter any difficulties in the beginning? Yeah, when I first started the shop, it was COVID. It was all by myself. I did everything and then I had to go to my neighbors. Uh, I didn't know any of them. I just asked for help and I was really grateful everyone helped me in the neighborhood. So people are really friendly. I was crying in the shop when I first started and I had a housemate, he's really kind and many neighbors, they came to help me because I couldn't do, I had to learn to do all the renovation, I learned to use the do and then to just start everything in here. So what do you sell in this shop? What do I sell? I sell jewelry, a lot of jewelry, <laughs> a lot of earrings and I sell some um, fashion item. I sell some bikinis, I sell some uh, vintage clothes, some bags and um, I teach classes here so I do workshop so people come here um, in a group or even one-to-one -one, and they learn how to make resin jewelries. Why did you start doing the workshop and teaching others? Um, I thought doing a workshop is really good because um, no other business is doing classes and workshops but there are many jewelry shops around so I thought this is a win-win because I get to share the fun but this is also it would be a stable income for me. I bought all this thing and I thought oh, why don't I just share the fun and teach people how to do it because when back in the days I didn't have anyone to teach me. So why did you choose to make the jewelry? Mm, because I always love making jewelry. I like the feeling to mix things together and I, use, I like to use a lot of recycling materials. I, um, for example, I use uh, bubble wraps and styrofoams. I pick flowers in the park and I dry them and I put it in the resin and then, yeah, it's just really fun. So, how did you find out that you love to do the jewelry? When I was uh, little, I, I love grouping different things together, so it, it's like a puzzle to me. Like the jewelry wise, um, my mom would take me to all different shops and I would find this all little thing and I like to attach them like, oh, these two goes together. And, and then, yeah, I, I love it, it's my passion. So what is the main materials do you use to create the jewelry? Um, recently I use a lot of resin. And like I said, I use a lot of recycling material. I have also sourced material um, that I got from some factories. I source things in local op shop or there's a place called Reverse Garbage. They have many recycling materials, many like rubber and, and, and used metal, like the thing that you use in construction site and many random things there. <laughs> I can see that you have so many unique jewelry. Mm. So where did you get those ideas from? I usually come up with my own ideas and uh, I love going to markets. So I, I love to hunt things down, uh, like dig into the market and I, when I found little thing, like no one would ever think that as earrings. But I, when I look at things, everything is jewelry to me, even like some like kids toy, um, things like that. I like to make something that no one else made before. I want to be original and I make really like fun, quirky, unusual earrings and that makes me happy. <laughs> so you, you said that you, you run the workshop too. So did you face any difficulties in the workshop? Yes, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> In the workshop, I really have to look at them every single second because um, with resin, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. I have to look at them each second. And sometimes when I have four students, I have to look at them the same time and make sure nothing goes wrong. And the same time, everyone would asking for me. So everyone would be like, Sinky, Sinky. And then I just like, okay, okay, you wait. And then when I don't look, they always do something they shouldn't do and then it will affect the final result. Yeah, so another challenge is I never worked with kids before 
and I never thought I would become a teacher. So um, I'll just share the information I got, what I what I know, my knowledge. But then when it comes to like really teaching, um, I think some people might have expectation of what a teacher should be, and um, the first couple months I had so many kids, and then I just realized, wow, I'm I'm the teacher. They they all counting on me. So I, I love them, but they can some of them can be out of control. They don't know what they're doing, and then sometimes their parents not here. They just drop the kids and then they left. And I said, oh my god, I have such a big responsibility. I have to I have to like look at them each second. As well, it's it's funny, but it's yeah, it can, it's a big challenge. So, what is your final goal into this field? I don't really have a goal because um, I'm happy where I am now. So I have friends; they suggested to me, ah, uh, they want to expand the business for me. They want to open more sinky shop. They want to, they want me to teach workshops in other suburb. But um, I don't think that's what I want. Because there's only one sinky, and <laughs> I can't be in elsewhere. I can only be in one place. So I like to meet every single one of my customer. I want to make sure they get the experience. And um, I think all good business is small scale. So I like to keep it small scale. I like to have only one shop. If they want to see me, they come here, and in that way, I can keep. The quality I can keep my customer. I can make sure my customer is happy. While if I have other shops, I can't guarantee that. So my last question is: What would you like to tell your customers? Um, I want to thank all my customer for stopping by in my shop. Um, it wouldn't be fun without you. <laughs> and I won't exist without any of my customers. So thank you. <laughs>